On a dockside in war-torn southern Senegal, a rusting hulk lies impounded by the authorities, its English captain accused of people smuggling. The alleged involvement of a British citizen is a disturbing development in the ongoing tragedy of African migration, which has seen thousands die in a desperate bid to make it to Europe. People say Barça or Barça. Barça is Barcelona and Barça is the afterlife. So they, it means that they are not afraid of dying. They will go to Barcelona, Barça, or they will die trying. Most migrants still rely on traditional wooden pirogues like these for the dangerous journey to Europe. A hundred people or more will cram into each pirogue and spend up to ten perilous days on the open sea between Senegal and Spain. But as well as the physical dangers, they increasingly risk being caught by patrol boats like this one from the European Border Control Agency Frontex, which constantly monitor the coasts around the capital Dakar. All the way, no, the way down here, it's difficult. So patrols are over there every day. But as the noose tightens around Dakar, desperate young men are turning to even more dangerous escape routes further south, in places like the conflict-torn region of Casamance. So they would go to Casamance because Casamance, you know, the, the, country, the region is uh, insecure. Yeah, they have a rebellion over there and it's hard for uh, our militaries or our police officers to control. That's why people would go there and it's very difficult to control. The capital of this war-weary region is the town of Ziegenshaw, 150 miles south of Dakar on the banks of the Casamons River. And it was here that we found the Salina too. So how did the Salina end up in this unhappy region and what was she really up to? Our investigation began, not in Africa, but in Portland, in Dorset. It was here, five years ago, that a retired handyman called Robert Thorne sold his house and bought a rusting old cargo boat for £70,000. Local people who knew Robert Thorne as an odd job man tended to dismiss his behaviour as a piece of harmless eccentricity. Bit of a strange man, um, with big ideas of going across the other side of the world. He didn't strike me as the kind of man that would know how to deal with a boat or have the qualifications that he should have. In fact, Thorne had no qualifications at all as a captain and he'd never owned a ship before. But he did have big plans for the Salina. He launched a charitable company to run the ship and he told the local Dorset paper he planned to fill her with medical aid and sail her to East Timor. Before long, Robert Thorne's dreams started to unravel. For a start, his ship, the Salina II, was detained here by the authorities for being unseaworthy. For months, the Salina remained tied up in port, forbidden from putting to sea. But all the time, she was incurring more and more port fees. Then, one night, under cover of darkness, Robert Thorne and the Salina disappeared, owing thousands of pounds in mooring fees. The ship was deemed by the Marine Coast Guard Agency as unfit to go to sea. Um, so I was more than surprised when I arrived at work one morning to find that it had actually left the harbour and it was last seen going over the Shambles Bank. Robert Thorne and the Salina were now effectively maritime outlaws. They headed first for Morocco, from where they were escorted by armed navy vessels. Then, off the coast of Spain, her British two-man crew mutinied, locked Thorne in his cabin and sailed her into the port of Almira, where she was again detained as unsafe. But two years ago, she slipped her moorings once more and disappeared, apparently without trace. It's a long way from Portland in the south of England to the mangrove swamps of southern Senegal. But this rusting hulk is the Salina too. It's five years since the British authorities condemned her as unsafe, and now she looks like a death trap, battered and leaking. Yet when she was seized by the Senegalese authorities, they claimed she had 80 illegal migrants in her hold and was waiting for more. So why would anyone risk their lives in this rust bucket? According to locals, it's because the journey on the alternative, the wooden pirogues, is even more dangerous. 
local human rights activist Abdulaziz Mbai took me to a bridge around 30 miles from Ziganshore, where he says the clandestines or illegal migrants wait in darkness for the pirogue to arrive, which will take them on the perilous journey to the Canaries. Ils descendent, on les place en dessous, on leur demande d'aller se cacher ici. On the bridge, some graffiti depicts the journey, and nearby, someone has marked the date of the last departure from here. Ils sont quelquefois 100 à 200 dans une pirogue. Ils sont serrés comme des sardines. Ils ne peuvent pas bouger. Il y a des gens qui tombent malades. Et il n'y a pas de médicaments. Généralement, quand il y a quelque chose euh, en pleine mer, si euh, ça ne va pas, il y en a d'autres qui n'hésitent pas à prendre la personne à le jeter en pleine mer. And even those who escape death may simply be captured and returned home. That's what happened to these three boys. This song appeals to young men not to undertake the dangerous journey. But the reality is, whole families will pool meager resources to send each clandestine. It costs around $500 for every trip, even on one of these small wooden craft, an enormous sum requiring huge family sacrifices, made in the certain confidence that their young men will send money back when they start to earn. And for many families, there seems to be no alternative to the desperate journey to Europe, despite the risks. Uh, people die. Yeah, people do die. Then they go. Some of them they die, some of them they succeed. And how do the mothers feel when they see their children leaving in these very dangerous boats? I don't think though they, they can be able to stop them from going because if you stop your child to go, you don't have anything to give your child. So it's better for you to leave him to go and try and see whether he will succeed or not. Increasingly, they venture further and further out to sea and into even greater danger to avoid the Frontex patrols. But the migrants' latest method, though even more expensive, is to start the journey in small, innocent-looking fishing boats and then rendezvous at sea with larger vessels like the Salina. That, say the Senegalese gendarmerie, is what the Salina was doing. After his arrest, the Salina's captain, Robert Thorne, was held here in Ziganshaw town jail for three months until he was released on bail on medical grounds while the investigation into his case continues. He is now in hiding in the Gambia, but before he disappeared, I managed to meet him in prison, where he insisted he was innocent of the charges. Well, I've seen him. He's painfully thin, very frail and quite angry. He says he hasn't been badly treated, but he's very angry about what's happened to him. He denies absolutely that he had anything to do with illegal migration. Up there is the fishing village of Gioge. It's a notorious departure point for illegal migrants. It's about 70 kilometers from Ziganshaw at the mouth of the river Casamons. Now, it was there that the Salina too was seized by the authorities. Central to Thorne's defense is his claim that he was only in the area because he was buying a launch from the villagers. But when we told the village elders about Thorne's alibi, they poured scorn on it. Finger on the piece, you must have some of the people who are in the world. The elders explained that local people were desperate to leave because their fish stocks had been decimated by huge European trawlers. And so today, in the absence of boats like the Salina, Wooden pirogues are still leaving. When did the last boat leave? Three days ago. 
Today, Robert Thorne remains in hiding in the Gambia and his ship sits by the dockside in Ziegenshaw while the investigation continues. Not surprisingly, the Senegalese nationals found in her hold continue to deny they were illegal migrants. But others have come forward to the authorities who claim to have paid Robert Thorne for the passage to Europe. Meanwhile, on the open sea, young migrants continue to risk their lives for their European dream. Thank you.